this setup that you see in front of you is uh, for part B. This setup we're going to be using to uh, uh, study lenses, both converging lenses and diverging lenses, with the ultimate goal of determining the focal length of a diverging lens. And um, if you come around uh, this way, so you can have a better look, you can actually see um, the equipment that we're going to be using. In this white um, tray, there's two lenses. One is a converging lens and the other is a diverging lens. How do you know which one is which? A converging lens is thicker in the center than it is at the edge. A diverging lens is thinner at the center than it is at the edges. And parallel light rays that pass through a converging lens will, of course, converge to a focus. Parallel light rays that uh, pass through a diverging lens will diverge, and they will never form an image. So our goal, like I said, ultimately, is to determine the focal length of the diverging lens. But before we begin the experiment, we want to estimate approximately what the, the focal length of our converging lens is. We need this information to set up the experiment um, properly. So, what do we do to determine the focal length of um, the converging lens? We hold a white sheet of paper, like the screen, in front of the, behind the lens, and we move the lens back and forth so we get a nice sharp image of something far away. In this case, the image that we have is the window at the other end of the lab. Once this window uh, is focused uh, very clearly here, and we assume that the distance to the window is uh, very far, let's say infinity, the light rays coming from the window will be parallel, and the light, uh, parallel light rays passing through the lens will um, form an image on the screen here at a distance, at a distance between the lens and the screen th that um, is equal to the image distance, which will also be equal to the focal length. So, this um, is a converging lens, thicker in the center than at the edges. This is our optical axis. When you have light coming in from an object that's at infinity, in other words, P is equal to infinity, okay, the light rays will actually be refracted as they go through the lens and they will form an image at um, um, distance called the, um, uh, the image distance, I. Well, what is I equal to? Well, there's a formula that relates the focal length, the object distance, and the image distance. The formula is 1 over F is equal to 1 over P, the object distance, plus 1 over I. If the object distance, the source of our light, is at infinity, uh, 1 over infinity is equal to 0, so the focal length will be equal to the image distance. Okay. So, um, once we've determined what the image uh, uh, distance is, which will be approximately our focal length, now we can actually begin the experiment by positioning um, our converging lens a distance of 2f from the object. So we take these um, lens holders which are spring-loaded and we mount our converging lens onto this lens holder like this and we mount it on one of these bases and we lock it in place like this. Now I'll reach over and plug in the light source that we're going to be using. And you'll notice that our light source, it, it, it has the shape of an illuminated cross with an arrow pointing upwards. Okay, our focal length of our converging lens was estimated to be 20 centimeters. To start the experiment, we have to position this lens a distance of 2f or 40 centimeters from our object or light source. So, if our focal length was 20 centimeters, double that would be 40. We move the, the stand so it's actually positioned at 40 on our optical bench. And we lock it in place so it doesn't move. Then, we take 
our white screen mounted on another block or lens holder and slide it in until we get a nice sharp image of the cross on the screen. Once we have achieved this, we will have noticed two interesting things. The object distance, P, which is defined as from your object or light source to the lens, is equal to the image distance, I. Between, and that distance, I, is between um, the, uh, the lens and the screen. Another thing that you will notice is that your object height and your image height are also exactly the same. This is only true if this lens is actually positioned a distance of 2f from your light source or your object. If you move this closer to your uh, object, you refocus the screen and you will notice that your image distance is now greater than your object distance and your image size is actually uh, much greater than your object size. And because um, the magnification is the ratio of the image size over the object size, this time the magnif magnification is not one, but greater than one. And likewise, you move this uh, to a position greater than 2F, and you're supposed to determine what happens to your image size and what the resulting um, magnification will be if um, your converging lens is greater than uh, 2f. Of course, uh, if you position this converging lens to your object at a distance um, equal to or less than uh, f, no image will be possible, okay? Okay, so uh, let's quickly describe um, the, the important part of this experiment, uh, and that is to determine the focal length of the diverging lens. So, how do we set it up for that? We position our converging lens anywhere on the optical bench and we just lock it in place so it doesn't move. Then, we move the screen back and forth until we get a nice sharp image, a nice sharp image um, on the screen. And we lock it in place. Okay. Now, we record this position as I1, capital I1. It is not a distance to anything, it's just a position on the optical bench. Okay, then the um, lab manual instructs us to move the screen out to a new position, and um, that position we are going to call I2, I2, capital I2. Again, two different positions. This position is where the image was formed, and this um, was going to be the position when the final image is formed, when we introduce the diverging lens. So we mount our diverging lens on this lens holder. We put it on one of these uh, stands or faces, and we slide it back and forth until we get a nice sharp image on the screen. Now, the image is not very 